There is no knowledge that is not power. What's going on, YouTube? My name is Alex. This is Ask the Cheese Gaming. I'm back with another 16-bit review for you this week. This time, I'll be taking a look at Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. UMK3 is the expansion to Mortal Kombat 3 and the final fighter of the 16-bit era. It was first released in arcades November 6, 1995. Well, the SNES got its port on June 26, 1996. The Super Nintendo version was developed by Midway and published by Williams Entertainment. The story for UMK3 is the same as MK3, with Shao Kahn hatching a plan to revive his deceased queen, Sindel. He plans to revive her in Earthrealm, and with her corrupted and under his control, he can now launch a full-scale invasion at Earthrealm. Now it is up to the forces of Earthrealm to stop him. The big selling point of this game was the return of the ninjas. In MK3, they were all missing. Scorpion, Reptile, Katana, Jade, Noob Sabot, and Rain are all playable. Furthermore, Noob Sabot is now a palette swap of the ninjas versus an MK3, he was a palette swap of Liu Kang. Ermac, Molina, and Classic Sub-Zero are the hidden fighters this time around. The controls in UMK3 are nearly identical to that of Mortal Kombat 3, with a run button added and also the new dial -a combo feature. However, some moves have had their frame data or other things tweaked. Some may do more damage, some may do less damage. One thing that was omitted for UMK3, on the SNES port at least, was actually the animalities. You can still perform a Mercy, but you cannot do the animalities. However, in this game, they did add brutalities. So, if you're good enough to input all those commands, you can watch your opponent completely explode and the screen darken. Just a nice little touch. Also, Jade's Desert replaced the bank. Though, personally, I kind of prefer the bank stage, but that's just me. Next, I'd like to touch on the music and sound effects. Each punch and kick in this game feels like it has weight behind it. While the music, on the other hand, it's fair and it fits the overall theme of the game, but I wouldn't say that it's the greatest, or even really the worst. The only major negative that I can come up with this game is really just the difficulty on the higher levels. Take Jade, for instance, with her glow, she could just be downright brutal to face. Every time you try to launch a projectile at her, she'll glow right through it and shadow kick you in the face. It gets tough. So, the quintessential question everyone wants to know, is Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 worth picking up and playing today? Well, honestly, if you're looking for a fun 16-bit fighter on the Super Nintendo, then sure, absolutely, go ahead and give this game a go. One final note for this review, the SNES port actually has the best graphics of many of the 16-bit fighting ports, while the Genesis, on the other hand, has the most stages. Just thought I would share that information. Thanks for watching, everybody, and until next time.